Hey, Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. Wanted to take a minute to explain some of the house rules that we use. You may watch our battle reports and wonder to yourself, what the heck are these guys doing? Uh, so what we've done, uh, real simply put, is we've taken the group fire rules out of uh, Tactical Ops, I believe it's in. Uh, we sort of expanded on them just a little bit to make this game go a little bit faster. Uh, so first, though, let's start with the dice that we use to mark our mech. So anytime you see us move a mech, uh, you'll notice that we typically mark them with a green die and a yellow die. And we, we do have a video for this uh, in our movement tutorial, but the, the green die basically represents our target mod. The yellow die represents our attacker mod. So in this case, let's say the Zeus uh, ran uh, six inches or six hexes, so two for running and then two for the target mod. So that's just simply what we do there. If, for example, the Zeus stayed still, we use these blank die here to represent uh, the fact that there is no mod on either. Now let's talk about shooting. So when we shoot, we use a variety of dice here, uh, and we roll it all at once. We roll the entire shot at once, and each of the different die colors represents a different weapon. Uh, so it's based on both the size and the color of the die. So black die represent our missiles, white represent our autocannons, red represent lasers, blue is a PPC. And so um, depending on what the mech is firing, we'll select the right size and color of the die. Uh, and I'll show you exactly how that's going to work. So let's say that our Zeus here uh, is once a fire. Uh, it's large laser, so we use a big red die here. Uh, a medium laser, so we're still sticking with red, but we've got a little bit of a smaller die here. Uh, and let's say it also wants to fire its uh, PPC. Okay, so we would take all three of these dice here. Uh, and we would calculate our target numbers depending on the range of the weapon. So for example, PPC's got a little bit longer range, uh, so that might have a lower target number. But let's say I need a 6 on the, uh, the PPC, uh, a 7 on the large laser, and an 8 on the medium laser to hit. So what we do is we take a single D6, which we call our pilot die, and we roll all of these dice together like so. And what we do is we add the pilot die to each individual weapon to see if we've successfully gotten a hit. So in this case, for the PPC, our total would be 8. That would be a hit. And this total for the large laser would be 11. That would be a hit. You know, here would be a 9, so we got a hit, right? So this way you're just rolling one handful of dice. You don't have to roll three different sets of D6s, um, which you can do if you're rolling all different weapons. But in the scenario where, you know, let's say we're firing two medium lasers, uh, it's much easier, you know, again, to do it this way, right? And you would simply add them up. You know, so miss, miss, maybe a hit, right? So that's how we do it. When we roll for location, let's go back to our original example here on the Zeus, we do the same thing. You roll them all up together, all the weapons that hit, all right, and then we simply pair them. So this would be a three, this would be a six, so you know, like right arm, right torso, uh, right leg. Now, we talk about the statistics of this for a moment. So how does this differ from rolling a handful of, of 2d6s over and over again? Uh, well, statistically, it actually does not generate more or less hits. Um, a 2d6 roll, uh, so you know, if you want to consider that chain firing, chain firing is actually going to result in more uh, consistent, like if you, if you absolutely want to hit with something, it doesn't matter, you know, you don't have to hit with all things, but uh, you know, you just want to hit with at least one weapon, you should chain fire your weapons. Group firing is very boomer bust. If you roll a one on your pilot die, most things are going to miss. But if you roll a six on your pilot die, you know, you're in much better shape. Um, so it's a little bit boomer bust, but statistically, on average, and we've done the math, we have some statistics background, uh, the output of damage is actually identical. Um, on average over the course of a game. So pretty exciting uh, because it does make the game go quicker. Uh, and when we play, we typically very often will use this group fire mode, um, but normal chain firing, if you want to do that, uh, is, is also allowed as well. 
And when you do chain fire, you would just, you know, roll it as normal, 2d6, and then again for location, right? Okay. So the other thing that we do differently is clusters. Let's say that Zeus is firing his LRM-15. So you would roll, again, a single die, right, 2d6, with the black one representing the LRM. Let's assume we got a hit. Now, the next thing that needs to happen is we determine clusters. Um, personally, the cluster hit table, I love tables in Battletech, but that one is my least favorite. Um, it sort of gives me a headache every time I have to look at it. It's difficult to memorize, unlike the other tables. Um, it's a little tedious. So we did some math on the numbers. What you do is you roll a single D6 for each cluster. So an LRM-15 has three clusters. We roll them up. If you get a three or better, that cluster hits. If you get a one or a two, that cluster misses. So in this case, we would get a single five-point cluster to hit. So when we roll for location, you know, let's say we fired a couple other things, we would roll these up, we'd roll a single black die here to represent our single LRM-5 cluster. You do have to roll each of your missile weapons separately, right? So if we were firing an, you know, an archer with two LRM-15s, or I'm sorry, two LRM-20s rather, you know, we'd want to roll four dice and then another four dice because in our rules, if you miss with everything, so you hit with the weapon, but all of your clusters turn up negative. You do a base automatic two points of damage, okay? Uh, and that will help even out the damage statistically to put it more in line um, with, the, uh, with the base rules, right? The rules is written in that cluster hit table. Uh, I will tell you, and I'll post up some shots, statistically, it does slightly more damage on average, we're talking less than a full point of damage though, uh, and for the speed of play and the benefit that you get, uh, we love it. So give it a try, see if you like it, let us know what you think in the comments. I know a lot of guys are very diehard about the, the rules and, and the tradition of Battletech. Uh, we are too, but we also you know, like to finish our games uh, and uh, you know, get as many games in as we can. And so these two methods, uh, again, the, the sort of the group firing, uh, and then also the cluster hits. It's a great way to help speed up the game without actually impacting the statistics and the math behind the game. It doesn't really skew or give anybody an unfair advantage. Uh, so very exciting stuff there. So hopefully you found this informative. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more from Death From Above Wargaming, and don't forget to subscribe.